A very good afternoon to each and every one of you, and thank you for joining us today. And wherever you are at this time, it could be at work, at home, but the most important thing is you're all safe, and that's all matters the most. My name is Josin. I am the Senior Program Advisor of the University of Manchester here in the Middle East Center. And today is the information session of the Masters in Educational Leadership and Practice. What you witnessed earlier uh, was the graduation we had in 2019 here in UAE. Uh, you saw very big smiles from our graduate as well as their family. And of course, that can be you too in the upcoming years to come when you decided to join our small family here with the University of Manchester. With us today, we'll also be joined by Samreen Essen. She's the program advisor of the University of Manchester, and she will help us to understand more about the Masters in Educational Leadership and Practice. Samreen, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Joseph, and to everyone who have joined us today. Yes, you're absolutely right. We are here to share the valuable information about the Masters in Educational Leadership program. Today's information session is going to be about Manchester. Uh, the University of Manchester established in uh, Manchester, which is the second largest city in the UK. Uh, we will be talking about the University of Manchester Middle East Center. And of course, we're going to be talking about Masters in Educational Leadership and Practice Program Overview, Program Structure, Application Process, Program Fee. Uh, we will also uh, have, we also have our current student, Dalal. Uh, she will be joining us later on to answer your uh, question and answers because she's currently pursuing her uh, master's in educational leadership program. And we will be taking all the question and answer at the end of the session. Absolutely, Samreen. But before we begin, I would like to take you for a trip in the greater city of Manchester in which in 1917, Ernest Rutherford changed the world when he split the atom at the University of Manchester, a breakthrough which resulted into the development of nuclear power, as well as the cancer-fighting radiotherapy. Also with Manchester first is the Manchester baby, also called as a small-scale experimental world's first stored program computer that was actually executed on June 1948. The exact replica of this first computer, you can see that in the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester. I call this next slide the Wall of Manchester, which shows you the people, the music, and the culture. On the top center, you can see the Manchester Museum displaying works of natural history and is owned by the University of Manchester. You can see that in Oxford Road campus. You can also see the wall of the great music icons from 60s band Bee Gees, 80s Simply Red, and of course the 90s famous rock band Oasis, which are all Manchester's best. In 1913 as well is another Manchester first during the suffragette movement when all women had the right to vote in public section. Manchester is also the birthplace of industrial revolution and the discovery of graphene, a form of carbon and one of the strongest, lightest, and most conductive materials known to humankind, which produce products like batteries, earbuds, and other sport equipments, to name a few. And at the center, you know him as Dr. Strange, as Benedict Cumberbatch, and before he joined Avengers, he saved the world and known as an alumnus of the University of Manchester. On this next slide, of course, it will be our two football clubs of Manchester, Manchester City and Manchester United. So much about the city, the people and the culture, let's talk about the University of Manchester. We have been established since 1824, about 200 years now. We're ranked six in the UK, eight in the Europe, and of course, 27 globally based on QS World University ranking of 2021. We're also ranked fifth in the UK for research power, and we are the home of the 25 Nobel Prize winners from 1906 till 2010. Here in the Middle East, we've been established since 2006. In fact, this year is going to be the 15th year anniversary of the University of Manchester in the Middle East. And there's a lot in store for everybody, uh, all students, of course, and all professors here in the Middle East Center. We have about supporting about 1,800 graduates from our MBA program, 100 different nationalities, and we're supporting about 2,800 students. Programs like MBA, the Kelly Manchester Global Part-Time MBA, the Part-Time for our Master's Real Estate. We also have the financial management. And of course, 
our program today that we're discussing is the part-time and master's in educational leadership and practice. We have six centers across the globe, as you can see. Dubai, of course, which is the center here in the Middle East, Shanghai and, and Shanghai, Sao Paulo in Brazil, Hong Kong, Singapore, and of course, our main center in Manchester. It's a great pleasure. I would like to introduce you to our professors who will be assisting you and guiding you throughout your master's journey. So our, uh, I'll start with Alexander Gardner McDarget. He's our course director. He has a sound, he has like 22 years of experience in education. <laughs> Um, he, he's also a senior lecturer in leadership at RMA Sandhurst, teacher and manager at international schools and universities, UK, Europe, Middle East, and etc. We, have, we will be having other academics who will be supporting you. We have Professor Helen Gunter. She is the Professor of Education Policy. We have Dr. Stephen Cottony. He is a senior lecturer in management and leadership. Dr. Stephen Rayner lecturer in educational leadership and Dr. Paul Armstrong, he's a lecturer in education. Thank you, Serene. And before we move on to our program details, I want to, to, to play a small clip regarding students' experience and I want you to, to, to uh, get some information from them how uh, their decision-making towards this program. Let me play this clip. Let's all watch this. course facility to get support that I can chose Manchester because I came here for my undergraduate degree and my PhD so I know of the university's reputation um, and there wasn't really anywhere else offering this course as it is here um, and this was the best fit really so yeah I'm excited. One of the reasons I chose Manchester was because the, the course is focused on being kind of on the leadership not just education in general and being able to do it as a blended learning course from a distance living in Sussex is ideal being full time. From looking online at the different courses, Manchester offered me the best opportunity to work alongside um, top researchers in their field who were able to give me insight into educational leadership because obviously I'm looking to move into a, a position where I am leading or a leading figure in education, particularly within bilingual or international context. I'm a mum of four, um, so I knew I needed to be online, but also I wanted uh, personal attention and accountability to someone um, rather than an online only course. I felt like a blended option gave me that university feel while still being able to complete the content. So indeed, we really do pride ourselves of being a part of University of Manchester, and it's good to know the students have the same sentiments and have their goals already set for pursuing the MBA program. Absolutely, Serene. And a lot of factors to consider in, in, in making a decision towards their educational journey is how they will be having the, the journey itself, how this would impact their, their current situation if they're, maybe they're working, maybe they're studying at the same time. And, and this is the, the, the slide that I want to show you and how we could possibly help you out in terms of the journey that you'll be having for the master's program. So this is what you're seeing right now would be what we call the, the program structure of the master's in educational leadership and practice. This program is what we call a blended learning approach. It's a combination of having access online and attending your course conferences that will happen in every six months of your program. Now, let's talk about first the online, the, the online platform. The online platform is the way you'll be having access of everything 24 seven, but there's no specific time frame for you to be logging in. We are not an online degree to begin with. 
The use of the online platform is for your guide, for your awareness, for you to know when do you need to submit your assignment, when do you need to do your assessment. The whole point of the online platform is for you to still study, work, and do your personal life at the same time. That's the use of the online platform. While the course conferences is the attendance you'll be doing in every six months. As you can see here in the slide, you have year one and year two, and you get to see there are two modules in every semester that's taking place from September to February, for example. You'll be attending a three-day course conferences happening in September during the first six months of your program. And then come February to August on your semester two, you'll be also attending another set of workshop, of course, conference rather, for a three-day course in March. Another three days happening in semester three, and another three days again in semester four from February to August. The way you'll be looking at it is that the 12-day activity would involve you amongst your classmates and amongst your professors being in one location in Dubai, at least during the first year, to build that kind of network at the same time and at the same time learn from your professors. This is going to be a completion of about eight subjects or eight modules in which six of those would focus on your core. One would focus on your elective, which is the optional APL, as you can see there on the left portion of the semester two. And of course, you have the independent project you have to complete as well. So the way you look at it is that you have time to study, even if you're working, the three-day workshop would be, the three-day course conferences rather, is important for you to also learn from your professors and amongst your classmates. This, this slide talks about what we have discussed earlier. It's a two-year part-time program. You can visit twice a year. In some, in some cases, if you wish to attend your uh, course conferences on the second year in UK, it's going to be your decision. Of course, we can accommodate you there for you to have a different kind of network you can build on your second year. You can still attend in Dubai or you can attend it in UK. Of course, the four teams talks about leadership, critical approach, change management, and of course, networking. One intake a year, we only happen in September. So for those of you who are actually interested to join now, of course, we have the upcoming intake in September, 2021. Of course, as I mentioned, we apply here Manchester Method and transforming your career while you are working. The ability to customize with your optional units at the same time in that minimum two years of completion of the program. And in the event, for example, that there's a need for you to take a break, you can do that. You can take a break in six months time, as long as you can complete the program within the five year period. Yes, uh, you're very right, Chilson. Um, and of course, the benefits of doing this course, uh, there are so many, uh, because uh, when you're planning to get your master's degree, this degree is going to really make a big, uh, you know, acceleration in your career. So this degree is designed to give you the tools to be a principal, head, board member, NGO leader, administrator, middle manager, and policymaker. And not only that, but after you are graduated with your master's degree, you will be able to apply the practices that you've learned through real life experience for elevating your goals and approach. Interview, you will be able to interview with confidence. You will be able to take risks and try new creative ways. And of course, that would be the chance for you to be the change in your education organization. Then as my colleague mentioned, we have workshops. Uh, we have conferences that will take place every semester. This would be an ideal platform not for you all to not only interact and learn directly from the academics and professors who are sharing the expertise and experience with you, but you will also be able to work with your peers in group works and discussion forums. You will have a chance to increase your network, find opportunities to grow, find opportunities to you know, work at leadership roles. So you will have the chance to develop your network with global educational leaders, academics, specialists, policymakers, and public figures from across the globe. The skills that you learn. So as I mentioned, that not only you're going to evolve personally, but professionally as well. So intellectual skills by critically examining and analyzing theoretical perspectives in educational leadership, practical skills in applying research findings to your workplace, country, and situations transferable skills and personal qualities such as conceptual and analytical skills, communication skills, 
and information handling. So all these skills that you're going to learn and evolve and find yourself to be at a position that you can really take up all those uh, aims to be a leader in the education sector. So this is where, this is what uh, is going to be the outcome of your master's degree. Absolutely, Sermin, and thank you for that. Uh, I hope it's clear to, to most of you that are actually uh, thinking is, am I supposed to do this? You know, there's a lot of, of contemplating to do, but you can see from here, our stats that we showed you, that maybe you're one of them. Maybe you have not reached that point yet, but let us help you to, to, to find the possibilities of doing this program that could really help you in the future. Now, let's talk about the most important part of the, uh, uh, and committing to the program, which is the tuition fee. All right. For the past two semesters, we have the, the tuition fee of about 16,800 pounds as a regular fee. Uh, but due to the current uh, situation we're all facing right now, we have decided to reduce it, you know, to ensure that everybody who wants to do their master's program can pretty much um, decide now. To, to be into the program. So from 6,800, we are now offering the program from 12,600 sterling pounds. And you divide that payment in every, uh, four, in every six months for the next four installments. Meaning when you enter your first six months, you pay the first semester payment. You have a minimum completion of the program within two years. But in the event, for example, that you need to take a break for any other reasons, it could be financial reason for one, or it could be a work issue. When you take a break, you don't have to pay for anything. You come back to the program again in six months time. As long as you can complete the program within five years, you can you make use of that in terms of making payment. 12,600 and you divide it into four installment as you can see here. For more questions later on, we'll be more than happy to answer this for you. Yeah, next slide. Samreen, I think this is really important for them to understand, right? Yes, I'm sure everybody must be now thinking how to apply. So before I tell you about the academic requirements, I'd like to assure you all that we have six program counselors who will be able to assist you and guide you through your application process. But before we get into that, I would like to um, kindly ensure that you have all your uh, checklist ready uh, because this is going to be, uh, you will be submitting your application online, but there are certain uh, documents that you will have to have it ready so that you can um, you know, upload along with your application. So for the academic requirements, uh, you can have 2.1 bachelor's honors degree or international equivalent from, from an institution recognized by UK NARIC or master's degree international equivalent. We will consider candidates with 2.2 who have at least one year of relevant professional experience and demonstrate their suitability and motivation for the course. Um, of course, uh, we have candidates who are applying from different countries, especially for those who are applying uh, from the countries uh, which are not English speaking countries as a first language, they would have to give a proof of English proficiency uh, test. Uh, you can see from the slide that there are several options given. There will be an options given from the university if you want to opt for it. And you can uh, get in touch with your advisors for further details regarding that. You will also have to provide us with a personal statement in that you have to um, uh, you have to write about your aspirations, your aims, why you're looking to do this master's program, how it's going to change you, evolve you. And uh, so this is going to be approximately around 500 words that you have to submit along with your application. Another very important thing is your reference letter. So you have to make sure that you have two reference letter on a company letterhead. For those who are working uh, currently can get those uh, reference letters from their current employers. And for those who are not working at the moment, they can get the reference letter from academic or anyone who knows about their car uh, career background. So I'll, uh, we'll move on to the next slide. So talking about uh, the application process, again, I would just um, enlighten you about the six program counselors, including me and Josie. So you can approach us by email or we can have a discussion on 
Zoom or Teams, and then we can help you with getting your documents ready to apply for the program. At the moment, the university is receiving applications for September 2021 intake, and we have limited placements. So make sure that you have everything ready so that you can apply as soon as possible. Send us your CV before, and we can review it with you so that if there is anything that needs to be tweaked or added in your CV, we can help you to do that. Then you have to move forward to complete your online application form on the university website. The link would be provided to you by your program counselor. And there can be circumstances where the admissions panel in the UK, in order to uh, determine your eligibility and make the final decision, might need to interview you. So you will be informed about that accordingly. And it takes about four to six weeks for the decision to come forward. And if the decision has been given in your favor, you will be receiving uh, uh, an offer letter from the University of Manchester that you can accept to reserve your place and get ready to start your program in September 2021. Absolutely, Sermin. At this point in time, I, I would understand most of you are still looking for other options, you know, when it comes to your plan and your education. Uh, one good thing about the University of Manchester is that we allow you first to determine your eligibility before you actually commit on it without any financial obligations. Doing the application fee will not cost you anything, of course. And if you have the English certificate that would allow you to move forward, of course, that allows you no financial obligations to for that. At this point in time, if you receive the offer, like what Samreen said, that's the only time you make a decision whether to go for this or not. A lot of parameters can be think about, a lot of things that needs to be considered. But the good thing about the University of Manchester is that we've been very successful with all our professionals coming into the program. In fact, one professional, uh, our guest, uh, are one of the testimonials coming from our uh, alumni or our current student, her name is uh, Padi Sinan. According to her, the program has developed my thinking and knowledge in the field of education and leadership and started influencing my professional practice from the first course unit. So, I mean, I believe um, you have uh, uh, the time with working with, with Fadia before uh, when she joined us. Is it in 2019 if, uh, 2020, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, uh, she was our first candidate to join uh, September 2020 intake last year. Uh, well, she was, uh, she had a lot of questions and a lot of queries, I must say, and she really took her time to make her decision because, of course, this is going to be a very, very big decision for her because she's working as a principal and she's taking care of uh, students and now she's looking to grow in her position. So, yes, she has uh, all the nitty gritty there, all questions there. We had long conversations, several discussions that we had over WhatsApp, telephone, even in the late evenings when she used to get free, she used to call me and ask me, am I doing the application right? So yes, it took her a while to make the final decision. She was able to communicate with our current students and alums and get their feedback as well, because that really matters. Somebody who's already into the program and sharing their experience is something that is coming right away. Uh, so, uh, and finally, when she, took that decision and when she got accepted into the program, she was very, very happy about it. And even when sometimes I speak to her, she she does tell me that this, this program is really challenging. I mean, it takes a lot of my uh, research and a lot of my time to invest, but it's very fruitful and she's really happy about the program. And she's also willing to um, connect with our inquirers, our candidates who are looking to start in September 2021. She would be very happy to share her experience with anyone who would like to speak to her. That's good to know. And for those of you who wants to have more clarity when it comes to uh, your decision making, I mean, we have our current students uh, who can really help you out, like what Samin said, Fadia would be one of them. And another person, which is going to be our guest panelist, will be more than happy to help you out. And she's joining us today, Samin. And let me put the slide. She is qualified to the MA level with a total of 15 years practical experience at primary schools in England at university and secondary schools in North Africa and in the Middle East. Committed to institutional excellence with the best marks across all campuses in the UAE in terms of student success rate, 
progression, quality of teaching, and differentiated instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you to Dalel Yuhichi. She's the head of the English department and English teacher of Adveti, ATHS Sharjah. She is a student of September 2020. Dalel, a very good afternoon to you. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the lovely introduction there. Um, good afternoon. I am very pleased to be um, uh, one of the uh, attendees today, and I'm happy to help um, any uh, student who's thinking now to join the program. So um, um, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you. I know you're busy when we were, we were contacting you, but I know you're so much busy and you said, Joseph, I'm doing this and doing that. And apologies for, for, for this, but I really appreciate you, know, you coming in today. I guess the very first question, and a lot of our, our audiences would, would also curious right now, and this is my first question to you, Dalal, is that um, what made you decide to pursue your program with the University of Manchester? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna be very honest here. Um, before I joined the University of Manchester, I had to do my uh, research, right? I had to look up in the internet and look at the universities that will suit my needs and uh, help me uh, develop my skills as a, as a, as a leader. Um, so I looked everywhere uh, in the UAE, of course, I looked at uh, all the universities that offer this course. Um, and I actually did lots of comparison um, and um, I made up my mind that uh, Manchester University is the, um, the best university. And I'm not saying this because of my background uh, that I studied in the UK and I came from there. No, uh, of course, uh, that, that, that's part of it because I, I know the Manchester University is a reputable university. But that's not the real reason why I joined. When I joined, there were so many things that helped me make this choice. And I hope that this will um, make it e easier for the people who are here in the session today. One of the things, uh, of course, is uh, the course content. So I've looked at the course content uh, that the university offers. And you've made a good uh, um, introduction and overview of that earlier. Those um, modules that you've shared earlier, those are the uh, one of the reasons why I've chosen uh, Manchester University as as you might have seen um, everybody in the session uh, some of the modules is called modules of educational uh, leadership uh, models of educational leadership engaging with research those are the things that I quite often asked myself and when I reflect as uh, at my practice as a leader am I doing the right thing am I following the right thing um, so I, I really wanted to know a lot a lot more about my practice and of course develop it as, as a current leader. So the course content was um, played a huge uh, part in uh, helping me uh, decide to go for the University of Manchester. Um, of course, the other thing that um, made it easier for me is that um, it is well known uh, of uh, its excellence in the research and in the scholarly work. And you've mentioned earlier You've named only few, like Dr. Alexander, our course director, um, uh, you know, many professors there, uh, Professor uh, Rayner, Professor Gunter. We, we've read a lot of articles for these professors who are part of the Manchester University, and I enjoyed their academic work um, um, a lot, um, especially uh, my course director, Mr. Uh, sorry, Professor Alexander. A lot of his current work um, I can relate to in the Middle East, as he's done a lot of the research about that as well. Um, so um, all of these um, uh, reasons, and of course, the, the probably one of the main reasons is uh, the employability uh, of uh, the students who will graduate from the Manchester Uni University. Um, that's for sure something that also helped me um, make up that decision. Uh, quite a, a, a huge number, probably over 90% of the graduates will be employed uh, straight away. So um, all of these little uh, re sorry, I'm rushing is because I'm conscious of time, but the, these are only the main reasons that helped me decide to go for the University of Manchester. Well, we, we still have time. Don't worry about that, uh, Dalel. And I, I would love to hear more about your experience. But uh, be, before your question, Samreen, I want to follow up on, you mentioned about the online platform during the time that you have uh, started in September. I know right now, because of the current situation we're all facing, Dalel, 
Well, was it difficult now? I mean, uh, communicating online and how, how was that so far in, in the, since the time you start until now? Actually, um, it is a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, when we had the, when I registered, uh, of course, at that time, the pandemic wasn't um, uh, invading as, as much as it is now. And uh, I was looking forward to meet with my colleagues um, in Dubai here. Uh, but uh, it, it, the experience, the overall experience uh, is uh, seamless, actually. It, it made it, uh, I didn't feel that I'm missing anything. We can reach out to each other. Of course, the networking that we've done as colleagues as well uh, in my group, lots of uh, academics and uh, uh, leaders from around the Middle East. And, uh, um, and we, we, we reach, reach out to each other all the time. Um, but also our professors, um, whenever I need help, um, just a, a quick uh, email or a line on our Pebble Pads, our platform of the university. It is so easy. Communication is quite easy. Also the team here, yourself, um, the ladies, Puna, and everybody else, whenever I need help submitting a module and I kind of uh, uh, worry about the technicalities, immediately they will just say, okay, this is a Zoom link, um, uh, hook up on the internet now and we will help you submit this, uh, this module. So it is actually very easy um, and it made being online really didn't make uh, much of a difference to me. Of course, the face-to-face -face would, would matter a lot more, but um, we are not feeling that we are distant. Sorry, Justin, I can't hear you. Mute. Sorry for that. I think we're, we're hoping that we can come back to, to the normal ways, uh, Dalel, this coming September, you know, when everything yeah. is back to normal, hopefully. Um, before, again, your question, Serene, just to add, you mentioned about support system, Dalel, which I wanna also to provide the details to everybody watching today. Um, myself and Serene is like what she said is one of the uh, the part of the team for the recruitment team and the marketing that can really help you out to get you into the program. Our job is to ensure that you get into the program. We have to ensure everything is in place. We have to know more about the reason why you want to do this. You want to go deeper in your motivation why you want to do a master's program. When everything is done and you're ready there, like Dalel, you'll be having a support system support system that will be there with you from day one until you graduate. Someone that would have you supporting, you know, if you have any questions about, um, concerns about assignments, let's say, uh, submissions, let's say, they have there with you to help you out. You're also gonna be having a career coach who will be assisting you to making you more visible in the market today. We don't provide jobs because we don't do that, but we're gonna ensure that you are properly introduced to the right people today. So Dalel, just a follow-up question on that. How was the experience when it comes to the support system? I think this is very important for others to understand. Absolutely amazing. Um, as I said earlier, I, um, I, I find myself um, uh, always, uh, even WhatsApping, I'm sorry to say this uh, live, but uh, even uh, through a WhatsApp asking people, okay, what, what do I do now? Uh, what is the next step? How do I do this? Uh, little questions. You guys will be surprised to ask questions of, oh, uh, what is the time, uh, the UK time is this? Uh, what is the, the UAE time? And other colleagues from Saudi and other places, oh, what is the time in this place? And, and they, you know, any questions you have in mind, um, you would find the team um, everybody in the team uh, with all their arms uh, in to help you uh, have the experience without any issues. So, uh, of course, that support system helps people either stay or leave. And that's one of the reasons why I am here. I'm a living example. So um, even though my, my work challenge um, can sometimes uh, make me doubt myself, but uh, it's because of these um, things, support from the system, support from the professors, support from um, uh, non-academic staff and academic staff that uh, helped me uh, stay um, and uh, pursue this course. Thank you, Dalal. I hope this answered this que your question. I, you I'm sure it sure did. That. You sure did, Dalal. You sure did. Thank you very much. Samreen, I think you have a question for Dalal. 
Uh, thank you so much, Dalal. It was very enlightening to know about your experience. And now you're almost completing your first semester, I believe, and you are going to be starting your second semester of February. It's already been started, actually. Uh, yeah. So my question, like after six months of the first semester, what was the what were the changes professionally, personally, that you felt that took place and you saw the difference uh, that you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. And in this question, I'm actually going to refer to Miss um, uh, Fadia. You've, uh, you've shared her uh, testimony, testimonial earlier. Uh, she's my colleague and she's, uh, she's uh, also um, a good friend of mine, uh, where I, I actually didn't know her before we started the course. So quite often we find each other uh, texting each other at night. Um, OK, so what do you do for the reference in this bit? What do you do for, for, for this article? Did you have to read the whole article? You know, all those questions that you would encounter, um, your colleagues also will be there to, to help you out and you can bounce off each other's ideas. So when she said that when she started the program, it helped her or influenced her in her professional practice, I totally vouch uh, for that um, uh, quotation from, uh, from Ms. Fadia. Um, one of the, th the reasons why I joined the course is to uh, learn more about educational uh, leadership skills and how I can improve my skills as an, as, a, as an educational leader. So far, the modules that we have done, uh, two that we've finished and submitted my second module, yay, two days ago, uh, uh, were one about the modules of edu educational leadership. Um, and the second one was called Engaging with ed uh, Educational Leadership Research. The first modu uh, module, Models of Leadership, um, uh, Educational Leadership, was extremely helpful to me. Not only that I had learned more about the leadership styles and leadership approaches in um, uh, not only in the educational field, but in general, but also it informed my decisions as a leader. It helped me develop more as an educator. It, uh, it actually um, uh, kind of guided my thinking. Um, it helped um, change my mindset in so many things. Um, and quite often, whatever article I read, I go, oh, I am this type of leader. I belong to uh, to the ACL, ACA model. Then I go, no, no, no. I'm actually distributed leadership uh, person, and I, you know, so you will learn a lot about uh, leaders, and that is. Uh, what you will carry with you uh, in this course. So for sure, it's only six months and only two modules so far, so far but I've learned a lot and I've developed um, a lot as an educator and my leadership practice uh, have definitely been influenced by, by what I've, I've read so far. Thank you so much, Dalel. And I am so happy that you have highlighted the importance of group uh, network. Uh, the, the network that you uh, create with your peers and you know even the students who are joining from previous intakes and getting to work with each other, this actually really evolves you because you learn from each other as well. You learn from each other's experience. So um, thank you so much for highlighting that because that's the very important core of our master's programs, uh, the network, the strong network that that you make. Uh, my last question to you would be that, um, how, what, what do you think, what is the importance of educational leadership in our society today? How does it make a difference um, having that leadership role? Uh, well, look, um, school now is a, a lot different from school and educational life uh, before. Uh, we now train kids at primary school how to become leaders. Uh, we ensure that our classes are student-centered. We want to see students being leaders, whether they are student councils or whether they are uh, part of uh, uh, clubs or uh, initiatives or running uh, their own uh, uh, programs or projects. We want to develop the leadership skills amongst our students, amongst our kids, um, and of course, uh, in the society as a whole. So it's a, I look at leadership um, as a skill, as a long life lasting skill. I don't look at it as an extra thing that may, some, maybe some people will prefer, prefer to become leaders. 
well, that, that may be the case, but actually it's a skill because without that skill of leadership um, in society, uh, I'm afraid we find ourselves in situations where we're not able to make decisions or even to think critically about things. So for, for sure, educational uh, leadership is, um, is the way to go. It's where the world is heading to uh, right now. But it's also a skill that I also tell my students. I uh, Part of my educational uh, philosophy is that my students should be trained as leaders as well because it helps them not only to develop the uh, the confidence in, in themselves but also uh, to develop those uh, skills as I said long life uh, lasting skills that they will be useful to them uh, at the university level later on or as uh, uh, independent citizens in their communities it's absolutely uh, crucial in our uh, society today Thank you if, so there's, much. if there's any uh, key takeaways for today, Dalel, I'm, I'm writing it down and you said that, okay, if you're not seeing that, it says long life lasting skills and thank you for that. You, that word, that line made my day today. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm going to open the floor to everyone. Uh, we have a lot of guests today uh, and thank you for coming once again. I would like to know okay. more about your questions. Dalel is here. We uh, will be more than happy to, to entertain your questions for Dalel. And to us as well, this is the time that, you know, we're opening the floor to everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, let's find out some questions here, Sermi. Can you see some questions there? Okay, wait, let me try to open so, that. So, I have a question here. Uh, it's kind of um, important, I think, for somebody who's looking for the um, structure. So, you have completed two modules um, and you're celebrating that. Congratulations on that. So what's your take on those two modules, like uh, uh, models of leadership and the other one, uh, what was exactly, how it focused on, what areas did it focus on? Um, uh, the first module, uh, model, uh, sorry, uh, helped me um, to get some insights into different types of leadership or different types of leaders. Uh, and I quite often find myself reflecting on the leaders in my campus, uh, on me as a leader. Uh, so I'll give you an example, um, um, a distributed leadership model. Uh, so quite often I ask myself, so am I a distributed leader? Mm, I don't know. Uh, so then I go back to the literature and I read more about it and I see what uh, scholars are saying about it. And of course, there is nothing uh, what I've learned so far uh, from uh, from the literature is that you don't need to follow a, a certain uh, a leadership model. No, uh, you obviously follow um, your own uh, leadership model, but these models inform um, your uh, thinking and inform uh, the decision making and all obviously give you insights into what is right and what is wrong in some cases. Okay, so um, I've, I've come across a lot of things like, for example, um, the um, uh, uh, what, what was my, one of the things I absolutely loved when I looked at the uh, distributed leadership that it is actually uh, divided by leaders to, into a common goal, all right? Instead of uh, going back to the old fashioned uh, hegemon where a person is dominant and everybody else is, yes, sir, I'll do this and I'll do that. So that's one of the things that I've learned and every day I reflect on those models and I feel, okay, I feel like I am in a good, uh, a good place there. But as I said, um, it's not about following one model, it's about uh, informing your own uh, decisions and learning more about these leadership models um, to to know how you can um, obviously uh, excel in whatever role you are doing. So for sure, the literature. One of the things I would say here is that uh, reading the literature is is absolutely important to uh, learn more about these things. A lot of reading. I've done a lot of reading. It doesn't end. Thank you, Dilal. So I have to ask another question, uh, which is very important, actually. Uh, so thinking about reading, um, I'd like to know how much time do you invest for your study, like on a weekly basis, maybe? I mean, how, how much time do you think that you need to invest to complete, uh, you know, the, when you're thinking about doing your semester? So how was the experience like? 
Okay, so um, again here I'm going to be honest and I'm going to work. Uh, I'm going to talk about my own experience. I'm, I'm obviously a, a leader and uh, and also a teacher in where I work now. So I have I have a lot of uh, work. Quite, Justin can tell you that uh, my shift starts 6 a.m. and sometimes till 6 p.m. I'm still on meetings and administrative work. However. Um, I have a target and I have a goal. From the day I registered in this master's degree, um, I sat down with my kids and with my husband and I said, look, the situation is this. And uh, I will not be uh, the perfect mother and the perfect wife uh, for the next two years. So you're going to have to put up with that. And, uh, and they are doing a good job, I think. I think. I mean, they're not here to to say yes, but I, I'll speak for them. I think I did. A, they are doing a good job uh, in that you will compromise a lot of your luxury time okay but um my and i i will qu quote my son here who said mom uh, they say it's not about uh, the journey it's about the destination and in this case it's about it's not about the destination it's about the journey and this is his first thing that he told me before i started the course uh, and that inspired me and that's what keeps me going now so i do give away a lot of my free time and a lot of my family time and a lot of my sleeping time and my weekend uh, in order to pursue this goal. Um, I also am a person with high goals who have high expectations. So I do set the bar high for myself. And quite often I'll be doing that to reach up to that bar. Um, and, um, and that's me, but maybe others would, would take it slower than that. So to answer your question, um, I set up a schedule. My weekend would be studying around um, the whole Friday, the whole Saturday, apart from the afternoon, because that, that goes back to work. Um, and then every evening I'll have to read about two hours in uh, each evening. So that um, I am, you know, on track. But also one very important uh, advice I would give to everybody is that try to keep on reading and try not to cut the lines of thought uh, be between the days. Because one of the things I struggled with in the first few weeks, because it will take you time to get to the gist of things, you know, um, one of the, and then break. I'll go back to my work and my school. And by the following weekend, it takes me three to four hours to five hours to um, to recap and to go back to the state of mind that I was in the pre previous week. And so that is not something that everybody would like to do. My advice is keep it up, keep the pace on, find some time to study every night before you go to bed instead of reading your favorite book read your favorite article and trust me there are really good ones that you would enjoy reading so a lot of work weekend and evenings for me um i'm not going to be surprised if you will complete this with flying colors uh Dalel. you know your program <laughs> <laughs> well again i just want to say to uh, to follow up on that and i'm, I'm sure sermine you you you, you know this by heart We've been seeing a lot of students, you know, having different ways of attending or, or you know, studying on, on a minimum of two days, or two hours in a day, four days in a week, actively checking and browsing. Uh, Dalel has her different ways, which is effective for her. And, and that's the whole purpose of having as well an advisor, you know, to ensure that they can tell you best practices. Uh, and then, and of course, to check on your schedule, because I, I know most of you are teachers, and it's going to be so difficult, you know, considering that it's class hours now, it's resuming, and the majority of you probably would be at home uh, doing online classes. There is a lot of challenges there, but again, like what Dalel said, it's more on proper organizing, you know, I think that would really work well for a lot of people, yeah? Would you agree, Dalel? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's about setting up your own schedules and setting up your priorities and uh, and go with what works uh, for you most. Absolutely. Now, we have some questions here, Sermin, and maybe we can answer it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we cannot accommodate every question, but trust me, we will come back to you. Uh, as you all know, we will get in touch with you after this uh, session. We have all your details as you register to us. We'll be more than happy to, to counsel you. 
uh, in a given uh, appointment that you wish to, to call, for us to call you back and discuss more of your question. But just to accommodate some question to the others here, let me check. Um, can I build up my PhD after this program? One of the major requirements of doing a PhD, of course, is a master's degree. And sometimes it has to be in a well-reputable institution like Manchester. So it's not the entire requirement, but it's one of the checklists you need to check in order for you to proceed. Of course, there's some different parameters in different universities you have to proceed with, but master's program is one of the requirements that you need to have in order for you to do a PhD. So main questions here, can you discuss more if it's compulsory to travel for three days as it's COVID and I'm in Bahrain? So yes, we've all been in a difficult situation since last year and nobody would have thought that we'll have to take over different norms and different ways of doing work and living our lives. But now we have come in terms with that. So um, I am very, very happy to announce that the University of Manchester has already uh, on top of its game and uh, we started virtually. So the people who were having still going through travel restrictions and other uh, personal engagements due to that, they could not, if they cannot attend, because, and even for, uh, for the reason of having the pandemic still going on, we have virtual platforms. So you can easily attend the conference uh, from your country, from your home. And we also offer hybrid. So in case for people who are not able to travel, they can attend it live broadcasted from their homes. And the people, the, the candidates and students who can come and attend it in person, we, we will be offering hybrid mode of workshops where they can come in at the venue and attend the workshops and interact with their uh, students and peers and everybody and academic, uh, not the academics, but the other speakers who can join us from the region. So yes, uh, this is the way forward and hopefully looking for a more normal uh, way of coming in person and attending it. But till the time we're in pandemic, we will go with both the options. Thank you for that, Samin. The, love, the question is to you now. Uh, what's your plan after the program? That's a good question. Um, uh, of course, the reason, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is so to have um, uh, a career progression, obviously. Uh, so I'm looking uh, to um, either have a better job opportunity in the UAE or back in the UK. And I'm quite confident that once I've done this, um, the, the job uh, uh, opportunities will be a lot more than what I can, currently can, uh, can be getting. So for sure, it will be um, a job hunt on a better, uh, you know, obviously, uh, career. Of course, of course. Thank you for that. Yeah. Samin? Yeah, we have a question here. Uh, so uh, somebody's asking about uh, what the certificate is going to be like. So let me tell you that the entire program is operated and delivered directly from the University of Manchester. So once you graduate, you'll be graduating with all the students who are doing the program in Manchester. So the degree which is awarded to you is the same degree that is awarded by the University of Manchester to everyone out there in the world. It's, it will be accredited and attested by Ministry of UK. Uh, in the UA, it will be attested by KHDA. Uh, which is the uh, Knowledge and Development Authority looking after all the private universities and school in Dubai. So yes, it's the same degree, uh, just to clarify. I hope I've answered your question. Yeah. There we go. Just to, And please know that we are not a separate entity in Dubai. We're actually one of the University of Manchester. So if you have done your program back in UK, you have done it in Dubai, or you went to Singapore to do it, it will be the same program completion. That's going to be your name, your degree certificate, and of course, the, the University of Manchester title. Yeah, I have only one more question to, to Dalel, and I'm sorry for everybody who have sent their questions. We, we have a few here, Samreen, but we promise you we can come back to you, as, as we said after this conversation, after this, uh, this info session today, we'll be more than happy to answer and, and be with you in any appointment you wish us to have so we can discuss more about your plan for the program. Dalel, any parting words for those aspiring ones who wants to do also a master's in educational leadership and practice? Well, my, my message is go for it. Okay, it's all about making the right choices. Um, I made the right choice, I believe I did, uh, by joining Manchester University. 
I absolutely love the course. Uh, yes, it's hectic, it's a lot of work, uh, but so is everything else, all right? So if you have an aspiration and you strive to achieve it, go for it. Um, uh, that, that's my advice. Um, I made the right choice. You also should make the right choice. Long life, lasting skills. That's what you <laughs> I would love to have that yeah. every day. Thank you, thank you, Dela. It's been a great pleasure, right, Serene? Yes, and I know we have some questions in the chat box, and uh, because of the time limit, we will be answering back all your questions through your program advisors, and we will make sure that we contact each and every one of you to guide you through the process of applying for the program and to see if this program best fits you. So thank you so much for all of you who have joined us today. Um, and thank you, Dalel. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank, it was you. Great. thank you for having me. It, it it's has a pleasure, been... Dalel. We'll see you soon, okay? Thank you. We talk okay. soon. Good. You take now, care. Take care. But now, before we end, I would like to, to, to play a more video for everybody. This is um, um, an initiative for social responsibility called Adopt a School with Dubai Cares. Let's all watch this. Dubai Cares is playing a key role in helping achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, which aims to ensure inclusive and quality education for all and promote lifelong learning by 2030. By supporting programs, um, access to quality in primary and secondary education, technical and vocational education, and training for youth, as well as practical focus on education and emergencies in protracted crisis. So we are having this initiative. Please, if you want to be a part of it, this is a huge thing. Please visit our website, www.dubaicares.ae slash program slash. That concludes our session today. Samreen? Thank you so much, everyone, once again, for joining us today. And we're right here. Just approach us anytime. Um, you can uh, get in touch with us. We will be sending you the recording of this uh, inf information session to your email. Anything else, uh, just do let us know. Thank you Absolutely. So much. Absolutely. Again, we thank you all for coming today. I know it's been a busy week, but we appreciate you uh, joining us today. I wish you all the best and good luck to everybody. Have a blessed evening. Goodbye. 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 Good